so today we will be focusing on device which claim as a torch bearer for awake blind nasal intubation for our fellow anesthetist we have labeled it as a hd vessel so objectives for today's talk whenever you objectives for today's talk will be we will be looking at the history the statistics indication contraindication prerequisite and the whole abc of awake blind nasal intubation but not the least we will be focusing on our baby device so prima facie awake blind nasal intubation looks scary but as the quote says difficult journey often leads to beautiful destinations so here we start so historically it was first done in first world war later on rob botham and magill developed a technique for nasal intubation but with the advent of muscle relaxant it started losing its stardom because of rapid sequence induction but muscle relaxant being a double edged sword it gave rise to cannot intubate cannot ventilate situation then again fiber blind nasal intubation was brought into picture with the advent of advanced techniques like video laryngoscope and fiber optic bronchoscope it has again started losing it it has become a old school thought but yes whenever there is crunch situation whenever there is unavailability of modern armamentarium like video laryngoscope and fiber optic bronchoscope definitely awake blind nasal is a boon for all of us statistically if you see retrospectively there was a study conducted on 500 patient out of which 64% of the patient required fiber optic bronchoscope for successful intubation emphasizing this importance but as we say the grass is always green on other side there are many setups where you don't have availability of fiber optic bronchoscope their awake blind nasal intubation is a boon to the anesthesiologist in a study conducting uh, comparing light wand and awake blind nasal intubation 75% of the patients were intubated successfully with awake blind nasal intubation so we will be moving on to the indication of awake blind intubation many resident might have logged in so i have included this uh, indications and the basics of blind nasal intubation so indications being difficult mask ventilation difficult intubation facial trauma aspiration of gastric content airway trauma patient may have severe hemodynamic instability limited mouth opening or intraoral mask lesions whenever there is indication the contraindication is standing in front of us the obvious contraindications are refusal by the patient suspected epiglottitis mid face instability we generally label whenever there is leaf force fracture 3 or 4 then when there is obvious coagulopathy suspected basilar fracture may end up tearing the tube in cranium itself so we should avoid it relatively there are large nasal polyp suspected nasal foreign body for the fear of dislodgement in trachea itself recent nasal surgery upper neck hematoma or history of frequent epistaxis we will just add on to the problem by doing blind nasal intubation so better you should defer from this question. patient preparation always start start from written and informed and valid consent proper counseling elevates 90% of the fear of the patient and 100% of our problem that's what we believe here prerequisite the table with adjustable height suction machine with red rubber catheter as it is non traumatic anesthetic drugs like dexmedetomidine are required for conscious sedation in case the patient is anxious and equipment to provide all the ventilation should be included in our armament and of course the oxygen supply and means to deliver are also need to be kept as the checklist says we had a mnemonic in km while doing pg we had a mnemonic c c salted psa so each letter stand for central cylinder circuit suction airway laryngoscope endotracheal tube emergency drug spine sticking and monitor furtherly to be specific or to be pertaining to the case itself nasal silicone airway warm water bucket laryngoscope if the mouth opening is present capnography if the successful intubation anesthesia machines suction tube sticking and we generally use eto sterilized vessel over here but it can be a disposable product also but we are looking for manufacturing let's see how it works out anesthetic drugs are both local and systemic before giving local or attempting any procedure we should always calculate the toxic dose for that patient so drug 2% or 5% lignocaine okay. jelly for anesthetizing naso pharyngeal airway 4% topical solution lignocaine for intratracheal transtracheal block 10% block spray the concentration used here is higher because whenever we attempt any manipulation orally 
the secretion from the patient dilutes the drug itself and the concentration gets reduced and uh, not to forget xylomotrivin nasal drop these are for nasal decongestion generally before uh, procedure also it suffices but to be on safer side no harm in giving we started 24 hours prior to the procedure and we repeat it every 4 hours of course to 12 pm 12 am the patient is sleep we don't uh, make him awake and put the nasal drop you can use 2 percent lignoadrenaline also systematically pre medication with anti mss and uh, glycopyrrolate and uh, anti silagog Dexmedetomidin is a very good alternative to glycopyrrolate because of its alpha-2 agonistic action. It serves as an anti silagog agent also. Plus, it gives you excellent sedation, analgesia with no respiratory depression. So, that's my favorite drug. Whenever patient demands ki man, doctor ko bithi vaatte hai, I always prefer that. Midazolam and butrophenol for obvious reason, angiolysis and analgesia. An induction agent nowadays, propofol is used as it is also known as milk of amnesia in our setting. Becuronium, after successful intubation, you won't be giving choline to the patient. So, we directly opt for cardiostable drug that is becuronium. Procedure, airway preparation start 24 hours proper. Once inside the OT, as the dictum says, failure to intubate do not kill the patient. Failure to oxygenate kills the patient. Even if the patient is getting operated under local anesthesia, we go for oxygen supplementation through nasal prong or oral mask or NRBM mask. Pre-medication obviously with ondansetron and glycopyrrolate is always a dictum. Left nostril it was selected for this patient because we generally take ENT references in this case to know the patency of most prominent nostril and lignocaine jelly was instilled. Nasal airway is dilated serially with silicone nasal catheters. The last one used is one size bigger than the expected size of endotracheal tube we generally use because it is well lubricated with 2% jelly. The purpose of using nasal airway you know it though it dilates the airway but plus I have observed that you know the direction through which you are supposed to go. Nasal airway takes you to tells you the direction in which you are supposed to advert the tube. While inserting, we elevate the tip of the nose because the chances of entering the tube entering the inferior meatus, which is below inferior turbinate, it has an ample of space for the endotracheal tube itself. So chances of fall passage are minimized and discomfort to the patient is also not much there. 10% lignocaine spray, again, we have to anesthetize three passages, nasal, oropharyngeal and tracheal passage itself after tracheal block. So transtracheally, we have a technique after entering the trachea and the aspiration of air from the trachea, we generally hold it at the needle of the base and inject because while when the patient starts coughing, there are chances of needle getting dislodged, so your block may fail. When the nasal airway is inside, sometimes I believe why transtracheal block, upper part of the vocal cord is not getting properly anesthetized, so we instill 2% lignocaine from the nasal area or endotracheal tube also and ask the patient to cough vigorous so the cricopharynx and upper part of the glottis gets anesthetized properly. As the endotracheal tube is a thermolabile structure, servolabile structure, we dip it in warm water for softening and after softening because it facilitates the insertion of the tube. We adequately lubricate lignocaine jelly and insert it, the, insert it in the nasal cavity. Once the tube is at cricopharynx, we ask the patient to extend his neck and protrude his tongue. This maneuver mimics the actual laryngoscopy when we are doing it under uh, ideal intubating condition. So trachea vocal cord gets opened and tube is directed towards that only. Tracheal intubation is confirmed by whistling sound, air mist, capnography and an inability of the patient to collide. I would like to add something. Once the tube is in front of trachea, the air column starts moving and you get to hear the whistling sound, though not very prominent as compared when it is entered into the trachea. But yes, you can proceed higher listening to the whistle sound. So this was the first intubation we did with our technique. The patient was actually operated case of Kabaddo. He was posted for another surgery. Troubleshooting, whenever there is, it's not like 2 plus 2 is not always 4. Whenever there is troubleshooting, we have formula, formalized something. We have noted down the troubleshooters. When you see the tube is abetting, the larynx is visibly movable. That means the tube is abetting at the vocal cord. Flex the neck of the patient and try again. You can try manipulation of larynx externally 
what we generally call as BURP. Don't confuse it with Celix Manoir. Celix is used for rapid sequence intubation. So when the tube is in paraglottic space, there will be protrusion to the corresponding side. You better move, turn the neck of the patient towards that side and try again. When the patient is in, when the tube is in esophagus, you won't be feeling any rumbling sensation as you feel in trachea and patient will be able to vocalize. Here, this is the most common problem encountered during awake blind nasal intubation. The solution, you, you retract the tube, extend the patient's neck and you can put a bolster below his back. So, your, and your tube has a curvature of around 135 degrees. So, it is directed towards the vocal cord only. If that is also not working, you make sure the tube is in pharyngeal base. You can inflate 50 to 20 ml of air in the bulb. So, the bulb gets inflated and your tube gets elevated towards the vocal cord and you can try that also. Now, coming to our idea, how it stuck. Actually, my daughter wanted me to blow a whistle which bought from a local fun fair. We have a very famous fun fair in Nasik Kalika, Zatra we call it. And unintentionally, she inserted so spontaneously that I coughed out loudly and the whistling sound came. I actually shouted on her, but after I gave it a thought, why not try something like this while doing awake blind nasal intubation when the patient actually coughs during comes during when the tube is in place. So we tried, I discussed with Sudan, we researched on Google also. We found some apparatus which were airway amplifier, but nowhere they were having any whistles or device like this. So we failed in two hurdles because we tried to attach whistle and um, angle connector, first with paper sticking, then with dinoplast. Again, there was a problem. We were able to intubate the patient, but no coming. So, we went back to physics. It was very clear over there that there should be no leak. So, third time, I used MCL and got an airtight chamber. Again, oxygen port was like missing in the first district. So, it had a risk of leak and whistling itself. So, again, the physics was called in. And it suggested minimum air speed required for production of whistling sound is 50 ml per second. So we opted to keep the flow 2 liter per minute, which gives you a flow around 33 ml per second. So we landed safe this time also. I would like to show the my first baby whistle. It is something like this. Now it has uh, transformed into a beautiful prototype as I stated my first script. Then I discussed with my seniors who were always very supportive to me in Nasik and SMBT Medical College itself. They they said we have never seen something like this. Why don't we why don't you patent it? So patent and prototype makers were not readily accessible. So I went to toy manufacturing in our local MIDC. From there I came to know about human grade plastics, 3D design liquid resin technique and the final prototype came. Regarding the patent, I was very novice during patent filing, just like a first poster, first day in anesthesia OT. It took me three months to reach the proper attorney and after a thorough legal search all over by her, we filed the patent within 15 days. So it was a very entrance shelter situation till the patent was filed. But now at hard work always pays. Now it is published and available to the public online. Anybody can access it by putting patent number and all are welcome. So this is the first diagram I draw for visual assisted blind awake nasal tracheal intubation. This diagram is fine-tuned by my student very pro in all these 3D drawings and all that. So physics behind the whistle, as the air from the trachea enters at one end and reaches the other which is closed, so the air molecule gets piled up on each other, creating a high pressure zone. Whenever the high pressure exceeds or equalizes the atmospheric pressure, it exists. Whenever it exits, it causes whistling sound. Same like the pressure cooker. That is the main reason right gets cooked faster in pressure cooker as compared to the open pan methods. And the whistling sound is itself confirmation that the tube is in trachea because only trachea can supply continuous air for whistling, not esophagus. Now, I would like to focus on some advantages of whistle. The time required is much lesser, it is cost effective as compared to fiber optic bronchoscope. Airway blocks can suffice most of the time. Learning curve is much shorter. Inline oxygen supply to the patient is very much possible where it is not possible in fiber optic bronchoscope it lacks oxygen supplementation port i have never seen oxygen supplementation port in fiber optic fiber optic bronchoscope 
ॲडवांटेजेस प्लस विस्लिंग वेनेवर आय आज द पेशंट बाबा शिट्टी वाजवायची घाबरत आहे शिट्टी वाजली की तुमचं काम झालंय इट ऍक्च्युली डायव्हर्स द पेशंट अटेंडन्स अँड इन्क्रीजेस द कॉपरेशन फॉर द पेशंट प्रोसिजर इवन अ ट्रेनी डॉक्टर बाय सेईंग दॅट आय मीन माय रेसिडेंट आर ऑल्सो डुईंग इट व्हेरी एफिशियंटली द चॉईस इज युअर्स अबाउट द स्टेरिलायझेशन बिंग अ कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव्ह थिंग यू कॅन आयदर इट डिस्पोज इट ऑफ और यू कॅन इट युअर स्टेरिलाइज इट देर इज नो रिस्क ऑफ क्रॉस कॉन्टॅमिनेशन अँड इट इज नॉट एंटरिंग द ह्युमन बॉडी इट डोंट हॅव एनी डेलिकेट फायबर्स लाईक फायब्रो ऑप्टिक ब्रॉंकोस्कोप सो द डॅमेज अँड द फर्दर मेंटेनन्स चार्जेस आर ऑल्सो अवॉइडेड अँड वन ऑफ द मेन ॲडवांटेज यू कॅन carry it in your pocket and go to the remotest possible setup wherever you want so we have made a short video one minute the sounds of the whistle comes lastly so i request everyone to look at the video see how i have ओके यू कॅन सी द एअर बेस इट इज यू टू फॉर कन्फर्मेशन and uh, thank you so much